melasma is one sort of hyperpigmentary disorder okay and uh, let's talk about its uh, demography it is very commonly found in females especially in 20 to 30 years of age and people are often they come up with a history that uh, this happened after pregnancy or whenever you have a major hormonal changes and maybe during your when you are approaching menopause or post menopause so um, this suggests one very important aspect that how it looks like so melasma is a very well defined pigmentary problem it is mainly of three types number one is centrofacial number second is malar and number three is mandibular type now centrofacial as the name implicates in the forehead around your nose in the upper lip and uh, malar is basically around your cheekbones and last is the mandibular which may extend up to your uh, neck and chest also now uh, what are its pathogens so why why this happens it is not a very normal pigmentation because there are very spurious the most important is that it is definitely linked to very important two aspect estrogen that is your uh, female uh, reproductive uh, hormone so that is why it is linked to all the people they do get melasma during pregnancy or uh, like uh, uh, like i tell you after like during whenever you have hormonal changes when patients are on oral contraceptive pills or uh, uh, menopause post menopausal then sunlight is a very important task genetics do also play important role but if you are a chronic exposure to sun you may develop this very early when we talk about sunlight a sunlight uh, first of all when we were uh, told about sunscreen we used to listen hear, hear many things like uh, there are many filters like uva filter uvb filter but nowadays the latest studies uh, they have come up with an option they have come up with one more uh, criteria that you also take put, uh, protection against visible light so earlier it was a broad spectrum sunscreen which was uva uvb and uh, now they also suggest that it should also cover or should also filter out the visible light because that also significantly impacts the pigmentary properties there are uh, many hyperpigmentary disorders uh, melasma is a different because melasma number one it has a different pathogens uh vascular some says vascularity there is an increased vascularity over that local area also result in melasma some say is uh, it is hormonal influence like i have already told it is because of estrogen influence and uh, now sunlight is basically a common factor in all the situations secondly melasma has a very typical uh, presentation and it is always symmetrically uh, uh, associated then it is very well defined and to start it's a very like brown pigmentation typical brown pigmentation that gets darker um on exposure to sun or uh, due to post inflammatory hyperpigment uh, pigmentation to various uh, uh, depigmenting creams that we are using and also it is different from other hyperpigmentary disorder in a way that it is a very resistant and a, it relaxes very resistant to treatment and there are very high chances of relapse so that way also it becomes a different from, from other pigmentary disorder then uh, as i've already discussed that it is uh, female predominant in a very specific age group 20 to 30 and uh, yes of course sunlight does matter most commonly like these are the only factors that makes it different from other type of pigmentary disorder and it has typical uh, areas of presentation like i told you it is centrofacial it is malar it is mandibular sometimes it may extend to your chest your sternum areas also the pattern of presentation the etiology the hormonal driven and response to treatment it makes them different from other hyperpigmentary disorders for any pigmentary disorder that comes to us and uh, uh, which may which includes melasma also is a sun protection okay so nowadays they have come up with a uh, sunscreen like i told a uh, broad spectrum with all the three filters which includes tinted now you must have listened to many uh, uh, brands they are it's a tinted so what exactly a tint is now tint is a ferric oxide that is adding up new dimensions to the sunscreen and that also has a very good effect uh, as per the with respect to sun protection first and foremost for any pigmentary disorder including melasma sun protection is must and uh, 
which implies use of sunscreens. Uh, every sunscreen should be applied after every three hours. It should be reapplied if you sweat, if you have taken bath or you get wet in the rain. You have to reapply that. But there's a particular uh, uh, quantity of sunscreen that should be applied. Like it should be a point shape when you apply on your face. Number one. Then uh, physical sun protection. So whenever you go out, you have to take like cover your face, wear like a very broad brim hats, sunglasses, and uh, even just full sleeves. You should cover your arms and all exposed areas. Number one. Then uh, uh, coming to the medical aspect, there are many uh, depigmenting cream which is available. Now, quote unquote, uh, it should be whenever uh, you, you should use. You should always read the instructions. That uh, there are certain things which should not be used if you are breastfeeding or you are uh, or uh, you are pregnant. Now, as per interventions, we have depigmenting uh, procedures like you have uh, peels. Then coming up to treatments, uh, peels as I said, uh, laser, the two lasers like a fractional CO two laser, and uh, we have uh, Q-switch NDR laser. So again, uh, uh, various settings are required, which has like. Uh, given in certain durations and they also help to reduce melasma. Coming up next is microneedling, RF technology. What is microneedling? Microneedling is basically a drug delivery system. That is, you are uh, delivering the drug like transgenic acid or vitamin C through microneedling or direct uh, injection into the dermis of the skin. Uh, coming up, very important that we have... Uh, uh, radio frequency. So these are the medical uh, treatment which is available.